Yeah, I mean, we're hurtling towards disaster and people are making changes like sloths. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is another response video for Melanie Murphy. Now, we actually made a video for Melanie earlier this year and that was a very impassioned video, shall we say? It was. But this video is coming from a different place. Yeah. Melanie had a terrible scare recently. Her father had a heart attack. She's very close with her dad and so this really shook her up. Melanie, we're really glad that your dad survived the heart attack and we can only imagine what it was like to receive that phone call. Yeah, in fact, all our family members still eat animal products. Yeah. So we're just waiting for the call when someone has had a heart attack or has developed cancer or type two diabetes. It's practically inevitable. Yeah, but it's a very difficult thing for a child to receive that kind of a phone call. So we're just really glad that you're both okay. So although our first video already covered almost everything there was to say about Melanie's diet and the consequences it has on health and the planet and the animals, her recent diet update video after her dad's heart attack spreads more dangerous misinformation to her audience of over 400,000 impressionable subscribers. So we have to counter that by repeating the truth. And this video, of course, is not just for Melanie, it's for everybody watching. If you're still eating animal products, this is a big wake up call. Mm. So let's set this up. Back in July, Melanie posted this video showing her and her dad going shopping. They buy a lot of dairy in the form of yogurt, cheese and butter, plus beef, chicken and salmon. Two months later, her dad had a heart attack. And so Melanie's recent update is about them eating less meat. Now, although she does show a lot of great plant-based foods, which is wonderful to see, there's also still a lot of animal products, lots of eggs, salmon and dairy, like cheese and yogurt. Pretty similar to what she showed going into the shopping cart before her dad's heart attack. And yes, salmon is meat. It's not a plant. They're still eating meat. Melanie, you say a lot of things about health and nutrition in your videos, and yet you don't seem to provide any supporting scientific evidence. So we're going to use science to help Melanie, her dad, and everyone else watching understand how not only to prevent, but also reverse heart disease. Which is our number one killer. In fact, it's the reason most human beings will die on this planet. Nutritionfacts.org is an independent, keyword here, non-profit, another keyword here, <laughs> organization run by clinical physician and nutrition specialist, Dr. Michael Greger. Let's hear from him about what the science has to say about preventing, treating and reversing heart disease. The 35 year follow up of the Harvard Nurses Health Study just published. Now the most definitive long term study on older women's health we have. Now, since the study started, thousands of participants died, but that allowed them to study the risk factors for mortality. Because heart disease was the leading cause of death, it comes to no surprise, the dietary cholesterol intake right, was a significant risk factor for dying. Uh, the second leading cause was smoking-related cancer deaths. But what's so neat about this study is that it's a competing risks analysis. Right? So it allowed them to compare different risks to one another. So consuming the amount of cholesterol found in just a single egg a day appears to cut a woman's life short as much as smoking five cigarettes a day for 15 years. He's off the cigarettes as well. E-cigarettes. E-cigarette. E-cigarette. Yeah, heart disease, number one cause of death. But what if your cholesterol is normal, right? Hear that all the time from patients, right? Have to break it to them. Look, having a normal cholesterol in a society where it's normal to drop dead of a heart attack not necessarily a good thing. I remember, number one, it's our number one killer, right? In a huge study last year, most heart attack patients fell within the recommended targets for cholesterol, demonstrating that the current diet guidelines are just not low enough to cut heart attack risk. Close to half of, uh, close to half of heart attack victims had uh, cholesterol levels classified in the guidelines as optimal. Though, I'm not sure their grieving spouses and orphan children will take much comfort in that fact. Late last year, a landmark review was published on the cause of our number one killer by Dr. William Clifford Roberts. First of all, 
who is this guy? The head of Baylor's Cardiovascular Institute, he's authored a mere 1,387 scientific publications, written more than a dozen textbooks on cardiology, and has been the editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Cardiology for 25 years. Well then, what is the cause of atherosclerosis? Well, first of all, doesn't he mean causes, though? I mean, there's lots of things that increase our risk of heart disease— hypertension, diabetes, obesity, inactivity, cigarette smoking. None of that matters, he says, unless we have high cholesterol. All those things can speed the buildup of plaque in our arteries, but if our cholesterol level is low enough, there's nothing our body can build the plaque with. According to Dr. Roberts, atherosclerosis simply does not occur if elevated cholesterol is not present. Regardless of how high our blood pressure is, our blood sugars, no matter how obese, how inactive, or how many cigarettes we smoke, the plaque that builds up in our arteries, choking off blood flow to our heart, to our brain, to the other arteries in our body, is made out of cholesterol. If cholesterol is the cause of atherosclerosis, how low does one's cholesterol have to be to become heart attack proof? Ideally, our bad cholesterol, LDL, should be under 70. There are only two ways, he says, to get it down that low. Put 100 million people on a lifetime of high-dose statin drugs, starting in one's 20s, or be what he calls a pure vegetarian fruit eater, which is just what he calls those eating whole foods vegan diets. The cause of our number one killer is elevated cholesterol. So according to probably the most renowned cardiovascular pathologist in the world, that means the cause of our number one killer is not eating vegan. All right, now uh, cholesterol is just half of the heart disease story. The other half is inflammation. Right? We've known for 15 years that a single meal high in animal fat, uh, sausage and egg McMuffin was used in the original study, can paralyze our arteries, right? cutting their ability to relax normally in half within hours of eating animal products. The whole lining of our vascular tree gets inflamed and stiffened. Right? And just as that inflammation, so here's ours, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Just as that inflammation, right? Just as that crippling of our arteries starts to finally calm down after five or six hours, lunchtime, <laughs> right? And then we may whack our arteries with another load of meat, eggs, or dairy, right? And so most people are in this chronic state of low-grade inflammation, increasing risk for these inflammation-related diseases like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, um, one meal at a time. Now let's hear from Dr. Caldwell Esselstein, one of only two doctors in the whole world yep. to have clinically reversed heart disease. It was really quite striking and exciting to see what actually can happen when you give the body every opportunity it can. The healing capacity is incredible. All right. How do we do this? It's very easy. We avoid the foods that injure the endothelium. What are they? Even pure virgin olive oil, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, coconut oil, palm oil, dairy, anything with a mother or a face, meat fish. <laughs> <laughs> meat fish, chicken, and turkey, and also caffeine and coffee, and Fructose. All right, what are you going to eat? <laughs> All those marvelous whole grains for your cereal, bread, and pasta. 101 different types of legumes. Vegetables, which are red, yellow, and green leafy, and fruit. But especially the green leafy vegetables. I like water on the fire. What green leafy vegetables? Bok choy, Swiss chard, kale, collards, collard greens, beet greens, mustard greens, green greens, napa cabin, <laughs> Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, cilantro, parsley, spinach, and arugula, and I'm out of breath. Things like if you have fish oil in the mornings, your, your risk of cardiac arrest or whatever is reduced hugely, and so there's loads of things you can do. Are purported benefits of fish oil supplementation for the prevention and treatment of heart disease just a fish tail? 
Thanks to recommendations like this from the American Heart Association, that individuals at high risk for heart disease ask their physicians about fish oil supplementation, it's grown into a multi-billion dollar industry. We now consume over 100,000 tons of fish oil every year. But what does the latest science say? A systematic review and meta-analysis published in the Journal of the American Medical Association looked at all the best randomized clinical trials evaluating the effects of omega-3s on lifespan, cardiac death, sudden death, heart attack, and stroke, either advice to eat more oily fish or to take fish oil capsules. What did they find? Overall, they found no protective benefit for overall mortality, heart disease mortality, sudden cardiac death, heart attack, or stroke. Melanie, Jamie Oliver is not the best person to be taking recipe advice from. He includes bacon in his superfoods book, which the World Health Organization has declared causes cancer. And in addition to bacon and other animal products, Jamie Oliver also uses an extraordinary amount of oil, which, as we just heard from Dr. Esselstein, should be avoided to reverse and prevent heart disease. Instead, take a look at the Forks Over Knives website. They have an amazing low-fat plant-based recipe section with all the kinds of foods that will reverse and prevent heart disease, along with many of our other leading causes of death. Finally, we want to address something that Melanie raises, and we've previously seen this video here on YouTube. It's about being a reducitarian. Meaning reducing the amount of meat you eat. We need a word that describes a community of individuals who are committed to reducing their consumption of meat and can encourage others to reduce their consumption. It is my hope that this word is reducitarian and that it can inspire a community of individuals to simply eat less meat. Melanie has described herself as being all about balance. She doesn't like doing anything too extreme. So of course she thinks this TED Talk is wonderful and it's promoted as a way to find middle ground and stop the fighting between vegans and non-vegans. So a few things to clear up here. There is no fighting. No. There is no debate. Choosing not to take the life of an innocent being that wants to live when it's absolutely not necessary to do so is the moral baseline. It's the least we can do. End of story. So applying this reducitarian idea to the victim of any other kind of violence would be seen as outrageous, as um, insane, and, and quite disgusting, actually. For example, I'm going to reduce the number of times I beat up my wife. Thanks. It's better to beat her only three times a week instead of seven, isn't it? Obviously, this isn't acceptable. But somehow, when the victim is a non-human animal, it suddenly becomes a great idea to slaughter these innocent beings a little less than we would otherwise like to. Now, let us be very clear. We totally support any steps taken towards a vegan diet. Some people go vegan overnight, straight away, no problem. Other people choose to take steps towards a vegan diet over a period of time. Yeah, if taking smaller steps is going to mean that you're going to remain vegan for life, great. Do then do what you need to do. But what we do not accept is reducitarianism as the end goal. Reducitarianism on the path to veganism as the end goal is a totally different story. However, these smaller steps need to be taken as quickly as possible. Don't let them drag on and on over half your lifetime because 2,000 animals are being slaughtered every single second. What we find most disturbing about this is the lack of understanding or the lack of care about the serious consequences that our food choices have on the planet we all have to live on. Yeah, I mean, we're hurtling towards disaster and people are making changes like sloths. The lack of urgency for change is by far the most disturbing thing about this reducitarian movement. As Dr. Richard Oppenlander explains, Five out of nine planetary boundaries or tipping points of our life support systems on Earth have already been passed, five out of nine. And with the other four boundaries, we're exceeding their tolerance levels. And all nine boundaries are interconnected. As one collapses, the others will soon follow. Now that's something that should trigger people into action. This is what Dr. Oppenlander had to say about the issue to the European Parliament before the screening of Cowspiracy last year. In terms of solutions, this is not a time for us to take baby steps or for us to go meatless only on Mondays because we are on very real timelines that extend beyond self into society and future societies, human and non-human life. We're all connected. 
Eating only local food will not solve the problem because it's not the size of the farm or the miles traveled that causes the problem. It's the type of food being produced. And despite what the United Nations and other gold standard organizations are promoting, this sustainability issue will not be solved simply by advocating eating less meat, which is subjective, inconsistent with the magnitude and the urgency of the problem, and perpetuates irresponsibility with every bite taken. And it mistakenly shifts the focus to seafood. Regarding our oceans, the damage we've done is irreversible in our lifetime. And today, there is no such thing as sustainable seafood. We hope this video has been a wake-up call and inspires significant and fast change for both people's health and the planet. Everything that we've been speaking about, all the videos and resources are linked down below. Please check them out. And let's make sure that Melanie sees this video yes. as it could be the difference between life and death for her dad. Yep, so we have listed all her social media links down below. Again, please share this video with her. Give the video a like, share it around to spread the education yes. and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, remember that going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the absolute least we can do. See you next video. Bye guys. And we get it. Yes, Many, absolutely. many years ago, we were the exact people that this video is targeting. We were yuppies sitting in alternative cafes, <laughs> sipping on organic milk lattes whilst eating free-range bacon and eggs, wearing leather jackets, mm -hmm. all the